all right you guys i am back and i am about to do um chapter three i'm gonna do two videos for y'all today i have been um lacking but really i'm sick and you know working more and more on examining myself and even also making sure i'm not falling in that trap again that i was doing and so far but yeah i'm good overall um as you can tell i'm slowly feeling better voice is a little hoarse because I did went a little loud today at work but not loud as to I'm about to tell somebody off but no you know command voice and all that so this is chapter three of love don't come easy part one and I'm going to read it chapter three present day diamond was sitting at home reading her bible coming home to Nigel and Kai always made her happy today she and her sons were spending time together he had been most affected by the divorce since he was no longer the youngest child. Diamond tried to comfort him as much as possible. As Nigel and Kai watched the movie, Diamond read her Bible until the sound of the mailman pulling up caught her attention. Pull, pulling down her Bible, she had been putting down, I'm sorry. Diamond walked out the front door to the mailbox. Looking inside the mailbox, she pulled out a brown envelope along with some other mail. Please let this be good, she thought, walking back inside the house. Opening the envelope, Donna looked at the letter from the divorce judge. Thank you, God. I am now Diamond, unique steward again. She wanted to call the family so that she could celebrate, but the news was too happy to wait. Going into the kitchen, Donna pulled out a glass of wine and began to celebrate herself. And I, I think it's best I just go on instead of making two videos. Read y'all chapter four. <clears throat> chapter four, two days later. Diamond was out of her car. Oh, excuse me. Diamond got out of her car the next day. She was heading to Publix until a deep masculine voice called her name out behind her. Diamond? He stated, waiting for confirmation. She slowly turned around, and her eyes grew twice in size. Wayne, she said, recognizing his features. Sure, his face showed his maturity. However, he still looked the same. He was standing before her in a black Calvin Klein suit. Yes, sweetie, it's me. You're looking good. How have you been? He asked, hugging her unexpectedly. She returned his hug, not wanting to be rude. <clears throat> Wow, I am doing all right, making the best of life. How about you? I never thought we'd see you again. She took a sweet moment to inhale a whiff of his cologne, which he didn't seem to have any interest in when they were younger. I'm living life to the fullest. That's a blessing, he smiled. His teeth looked cleaner. What happened to the Wayne I met years ago? And what did you do with him? She teased him, looking up and down. He had actually cleaned up pretty good. His facial hair was cut, and his mustache went well with his short fade. Wade didn't have on any jewelry. She purposely glanced at his hand, noticing there wasn't a wedding ring. Ha! Very funny. I see you haven't lost your sense of humor. Humor wasn't anything she was. Humor wasn't anything she indulged in lately. How did he get her to come out of her shell? She hadn't laughed or had a good time since Newt walked out of her life. Seeing Wayne made butterflies flutter in her stomach. It felt weird, but Diamond couldn't help her excitement. Hmm, he's not married either. This has to be some trick, she said to herself. What are you doing here? She continued walking through the grocery aisle. I'm shopping like you. I needed a few things for my church meeting tomorrow and wanted to make sure there were enough treats for the clients. His words had really caught her off guard. Off guard. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Say what? Church? Okay, now I know I am dreaming. She giggled. Once she spotted the spaghetti noodles that she was looking for, she picked her favorite brand and tossed it into her shopping cart. You're not dreaming. I'm for real. I am a pastor and everything now. I got out of the streets after I was released from rehab, he bragged. 
Really? That's amazing. I'm so proud of you, Wayne. She responded, hugging him again. She noticed her overly friendly action and tried to calm down. Diamond, don't jump all over the man just because he serves the Lord. She thought, feeling embarrassed. So, I don't see a wedding ring on your finger. How can such a beautiful woman such as herself still be single? He asked, continuing to follow her through the store. They passed by other customers, casually smiling in return. Trust me, it seems to get easier. It seems to be getting easier these days. I'm not single by choice. My divorce finalized the other day. She admitted, turning the corners of the aisle to pick up her last item needed. Dumb fool! Whoever let you go must be crazy. Just as he finished his statement, his cell phone shined. Sorry, excuse me for one second. He held up a finger while Diamond's thoughts ran through her mind. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. This man is still fine. Lord, you are sending him. Lord, if you are sending him my way, please don't let him break my heart. I don't think I can take another fake relationship, she prayed. No, I don't care what he says. Tell him I will have the money up front when I get paid. If he keeps calling him and harassing her, it will be war. I will hate to see, I will hate to come see about him. Wayne tried to speak in a low tone with a tight lip. His eyes darted around as he hoped Diamond couldn't hear his conversation with her. Exactly. All right. Bye. He said in his call. Businessman too, huh? Diamond said, smiling. She found her tomato paste and placed several cans inside the basket. Yeah, preaching such a side gig. Actually, I've taken over my grandfather's construction company. Also, I visit rehabs, prisons, and homeless shelters as well. It made Diamond smile inside, hearing that he was actually a real man of God, and that he was doing something positive with his life. She surprisingly felt her guard for Wayne could be let down. At first, when she saw him, she couldn't help but think about his old ways. Evidently, rehab did him some good after all. Pretty interesting. Well, it was good seeing you again. Unfortunately, I had to get home to prepare a meal for my sons. Take care, Diamond said, preparing to walk towards the cash register. You have another son? Yep, I hate to sound harsh, but life didn't stop for me when you went into rehab. I got married and had Nigel. Dion is grown up. I am also raising my bonus son who was four. His name is Kai. He looked her up and down saying, are you serious? I can't tell. You look amazing. Diamond blushed again. Thank you. Well, may I walk into your car? He asked. Diamond spotted an available counter with a cashier eagerly waiting to check out her items. So she moved towards that direction. The cashier was just finishing up with an elderly Korean woman. I thought you had to do some shopping, she asked. Right. I do still need to get a few things out of here. But maybe I can call sometimes instead, he suggested. He stared at Diamond in her black sweater dress, imagining what lied underneath. She had definitely sprouted in more places that he hadn't seen her carry weight in before. Seeing her made him completely forget his reason for being in the store in the first place. Sure, give me a second. Diamond placed her few grocery items on the conveyor belt, allowing the cashier to slide them in her direction. She smiled at the, fe at the young female cashier, who looked to be in her 20s. Wayne slid past her, removing his wallet from his pants pockets. No problem, he told her. Just charge it to my card. He advised the cashier, handing her a black plastic card with a Visa logo. Wayne was always a gentleman, but he was really showing out in Diamond's opinion. No other man has willingly volunteered to do something as generous as he was. However, she would keep an open mind because most men that did wanted something in return. Wayne, oh, you didn't have to pay for it. 
Diamond placed her purse on the conveyor belt while scrounging around for her pocketbook. By the time she looked up, the cashier was handing the receipt to Wayne. <clears throat> it must be nice to have a man buying your groceries. The only men I meet are the kinds that want to eat your groceries and leave. And I am not talking about the kind in the refrigerator either. Wayne and Diamond burst into the laughter at the young girl's remarks. She smiled, showing her braced teeth. She had black mini micro braids and pimples on her chocolate-coated skin. But all in all, she was a pretty girl. Thank you, she responded to the cashier as Wayne picked up her bags and handed them to her. I know I didn't have to do it, but I wanted to. He gazed into her eyes and for a second time froze. There was, unexpe there was unexplained chemistry between them until Diamond snapped out of her trance. Well, I have to get going. Here's my number. Give me a call sometimes. She handed him her medical business card. He examined it and blushed before putting it in his wallet. Thanks. It was good seeing you again. Enjoy the rest of your evening. He smiled and walked back towards the inside of the grocery store. Diamond exited the store. Feeling breath of fresh air, feeling a breath of fresh air. The wind was blowing and the sun was getting ready to go down. She could only hope that this was a sign that everything was going to be alright. 